All right, let's build an electric van. So behind me is a project that I've been working on for the better part of two years. And spoiler alert, it's still not done. This is my 1993 Honda Acti that I imported two years ago. And this van is one of many of the K vans that were designed in Japan, particularly as a light suburban utility vehicle for businesses and families for short commutes, small cargo loads, and light farm work. Nearly three years ago, I had the dumb idea to make one of these electric, and now I'm deep in the throes of doing just that. Um, this particular van started life with a 660cc engine just sitting right in front of the rear axle, driving the front and rear wheels, making it a full-time four-wheel drive mid-engine vehicle. So just practically an Audi R8. So it was 1,600 pounds at the time and had tires that were so small they looked like they could be mounted on a bicycle. So let me take you back to the beginning where I started tearing this thing down so we could build it up. That's chapter one. The very first thing was getting the van off the ground. To do that, I put together this little jig and started cutting some two by fours to create some stands for the jack stands to actually sit on top of. Next, I just started taken it all apart, unscrewing everything that uh, was getting in the way of removing this rear engine. So, today, um, basically just progress where we're at. I've gotten some more stuff taken out. Uh, things have been really slow because I've been so busy with work. Uh, but we're finally getting the rear axle out and hopefully well, the pie in the sky is that we get the actual engine out today, but I don't think that's actually going to happen. We're going to work on getting this rear hub assembly taken apart. I did the left side to get that axle out and I'm going to try to do my best to not blow something up today. There are already a ton of really good resources on how to remove the rear axle on one of these old Acties, so I won't bore you with all the details, but I will show you just a little bit of how much of a process this was for me on the first go. These clips, I don't know what was going on with me in these clips, but I could not get them off for the life of me. And I'm speeding this clip up that we're watching right now. And it still took this long. This looks like it might have been the first clip I ever tried to take off, but it's actually the fourth or fifth. But then I discovered there was a simpler way, which is just taking a flathead screwdriver, pushing in the clip, uh, rotating the pin and pulling it out. Then pulled off all the springs, remembering where they go. Take the pads out of the uh, piston at the top and then we can start uh, to remove this e-brake. So a trick that I learned was a small little hose clamp can go down just over the little metal tabs that keep it in place. You tighten that down and then you gently pull it back a little bit, remove the hose clamp and pull it through just like I did. Goodness gracious. All right, well, definitely not going to do that again. Okay. <laughs> now I'm not going to do that again. For real. After muscling that rear axle out of the van, I noticed that the rear left actual CV axle had a big old tear in the boot. Look at that. Yummy. Great. So that'll be something we have to replace. Next, started taking apart all the hoses, marking things down, putting them in Ziploc bags. We had to 
cut out the exhaust. Don't need that anymore. A lot of cutting and unscrewing. Um, tons of different things. Sheesh, we did it. You witnessed it. Here is the EO7A 660cc engine. Completely dropped out with the transmission there. This old dinosaur is gonna be replaced by this sleek little guy. But what's crazy is that so you can see the transmission ends right here. That's not that far. Most of the space on this engine is this way. It's tilted when it's actually in there. It's kind of tilted at a 45 degree angle. You can see top of it right there, technically. Um, so yeah, we shall see. But this is a big milestone. It's the uh, the beginning of the beginning. This is the first the first chapter. You can see there's just so much room under there now. Just tons of room. So hopefully we can you know finagle something, make something work. And I'm gonna do my darndest to get the transmission off while keeping the engine on here. And this pallet worked. This. I, I'd say this is a, a, pre, a pretty smooth way to do it. The book says otherwise. They've kind of got their own thing going here where you, you basically, you basically uh, have like a, a hoist thing that sits in here, like a triangle with a chain coming down that mounts to the engine and then underneath you put this a floor jack type of situation. That just seems like too much work. What I'd say is you jack the whole thing up and you get one of these. This is the 500 pound hydro hydraulic lift table. But um, yeah, it's great. Big success. Now that the engine's removed, the next step is separating the engine from the transmission. What we are planning to do is taking our electric motor and using an adapter plate to mate it to the stock transmission. So I've taken all the bolts out. This should be an easy separation. Just a little tug here. It should just slide right out. Just nice and easy. Super simple. Okay. One more pull, maybe. What if we get some leverage? Here's my little floor jack. I'm just gonna prop up the transmission side. We'll see if that changes anything. Okay, leverage is working. So I'm just gonna use this little pickle fork Pry it open a little bit, get it the rest of the way. Again, all the bolts are already taken out. It's just those, they're little, these little guides that um, you use to make sure that it's aligned and those are staying tight in there. So we're just gonna prop it up maybe a little bit more, some more leverage. Bingo, that's it. Next episode, let's see how we're actually going to hook a motor up to this thing. All right, see you next time.